Hey there booktube, my name is Tayson and this is the Rambling Reviewer, so called because I tend to ramble a lot. And I'm not going to add the next part to that statement where I usually say that this is a video where I hope I won't ramble too much because I will. And there's a lot of stuff I need to get through anyway, so this is going to be a long video. It's actually the second time I started making this video. I, uh talked for about 22 minutes, and then I was interrupted, and I don't really want to have to edit, so this is the second attempt. Hopefully I won't get interrupted this time. This video I want to talk about Nonfiction November, though. Uh, for those who somehow don't know, Nonfiction November is a annual booktube event designed to read nonfiction. It is created by Olive and a book Olive. There are some wonderful prompts. I will list them all below so that I don't get lost in the mesh of my words. And I will also list her, ta her channel and her announcement video. Uh, I'm just going to jump into the books though. And the, um, and the prompts. So, there are four prompts. Each one is kind of a very abstract, one-word prompt, and you can interpret it however you want. Now, for some of these, the interpretation was pretty easy. For others, I had to kind of force it. Uh, this is normal and natural and well uh, understood by Olive and anyone else who has used, who does this. So... If some of these books don't seem to really fit, if some of my explanations can seem to be forcing it, it's probably because I just kind of really wanted to read that book. And I didn't care so much about the prompt. <laughs> uh, now, I chose three or four books for each prompt. I am not going to read all uh, 14 books that I have written down here. Won't happen. I'm also taking part in New Worlds November. I will probably also do some other events depending on what events show up. Uh, I may also do not NaNoWriMo. And I have a job. And other responsibilities, so... I'm sorry, I'm not going to read 14 books. Sorry. Get over it. <laughs> um, but no, I, I, I hope to at least read... At least read one for each category. And so I've given myself a lot of choices. But I will try to read more than just the four. So, first up is record. My first thought is, of course, a record of someone's life. Biographies. And I have two possibilities for this. The one I'm probably going to read, though, is Abigail Adams by Woody Holton. Yeah, Woody Holton. Now, Abigail Adams was the wife of President John Adams, whose biography I read back in 2017, 18? I think 17. Um, and I believe it was actually the very first video I ever made on this channel. And I think the only thing that has changed in that channel is that I'm a little bit better in terms of making the camera <laughs> be at the right angle. But I love that book. It was a uh, great uh, joy to read about this man's life, his relationship to policy, his relationship to history, but also his personal life, his thoughts and books, his friendships with, like, Thomas Jefferson that turned into uh, anger, and then went back to friendship. His... Uh, political alliances, his political mishaps, and also his love along with his wife, uh, Abigail Adams. Now, I started reading this book a while back. I never finished it, so I'm going to read this book. I, I, I will definitely read this one uh, in, non in uh, November. This is almost certainly going to be the book I will read for this prompt. But just in case I want another idea, I also have 
a biography of the Prophet Muhammad by Karen Armstrong, a prophet for our time. Now, I, uh, I know a little bit about the Prophet Muhammad's life, not a ton. Uh, I, I expect that this book will... I don't expect it to have, I don't know how much of a bias it would have. I don't expect it to have a very strong conservative bias, because I think I read that Karen Armstrong definitely leans more towards the left. Uh, at least in her writing about Muhammad. But I don't know if it will maybe be too apologetic. Um, and I don't know how, what the correct way for that reading would be. Uh, but I'm aware this might not be a super accurate biography. Or it might not be super um, true to maybe some darker aspects of this person's life. I don't, I don't know. I don't have that knowledge to uh, gauge. But I am hoping that this will be a good primer. And then I can read more, more, uh, more scholarly works, more popular works, maybe also read some of the sources some more. Uh, this is a starter though. The other work I have is a little bit forced, a little bit forced. It is Taibayo, uh, The Supernatural Cats of Japan. This is a work by Zach Davison. I don't have it, that's why I'm not showing you a prop. Uh, Seth Davidson wrote a work titled uh, Yurei, which is about Japanese ghosts, specifically the very, like, white-shrouded, black-haired, you know, the ring, the grudge. Uh, and I loved that work. I, I read it. I really liked it. Uh, I loved the history and the mythology and the uh, adaptations and movies and and plays, and I, I do quite like Japanese horror. The Rain, The Grudge, but also lesser known ones. And I am excited to read this. Now my reason for putting it in record is because also I'm also like biographies, myths are themselves records. They are records of the beliefs of people from long ago, oftentimes carried down through oral traditions and then written down and recorded by new people of Katie O'Hearn, uh, and new scholars, though they don't die, I don't, we don't lose them. Now, my second, the second prompt is secret, which is probably the easiest prompt in here, I would imagine. Uh, maybe record would be easier, but just think of how many books deal with secrets. I mean, any political book will have something dealing with political conspiracies, the sordid lives of politicians, classified information, um, what goes on behind the screens, even if it's not something dark, like just secret meetings, all the secret meetings that must go on behind closed doors of, between heads of state, between uh, heads of state and their cabinets, whatever. So really this is a very easy one to do. And not just politics, but also corporations, there's plenty of secrets. Any book that has to do with sexual or physical abuse, any book that has to do with medicine, the HIPAA, um, very, very wide-ranging. Uh, I did have a book that I picked out for this one. Uh, in my own question, that is a book that uh, it's related to an issue that I care deeply about, and that is Animal Liberation by Peter Singer. Now, last year, I, two years ago actually, I went vegan, but, uh, I had been thinking about this idea for a long time. It was eventually a, a YouTube video actually that made me switch entirely, a philosophical video done by, uh, Alex O'Connor, his channel is The Cosmic Skeptic, it was just a TED Talk, 
I'll link it below if anyone's curious about it. But after watching this video, the first two changes I first two things I wanted to do was go out and buy a lot of food so that I could have a bunch of stuff in case I to be vegan. But also buy books. Um and one of the books I bought was this. And I started reading it and I liked what I read of it. I took a lot of annotations, a lot of notes, uh underlined a lot of stuff that was interesting. But I never finished it. So I want to finish this this year. Uh, the other two books, the free books that I got, written down are things that I don't have. Uh, the first one is one that does not need much of an introduction because it has been talked about to death on every booktube channel in existence. Hello. Uh, my cat came over here to say hi. Came with. If Steve can show off his pet... So, so can I. He doesn't like being held, so go ahead. <laughs> um, differences is that uh, Mur the Murphy, the bean, uh, seems to enjoy being held a little bit more. Uh, but, and that book is, of course, the book that everyone is talking about is, of course, uh, I'm glad my mom is dead. I'm glad my mom died, sorry. Uh, by Majek... <laughs> Jeanette McCurdy. Um, for those who don't know, Jeanette McCurdy was an actress who worked on... She was a child actress who worked on shows, namely iCarly and Sam and Cat. Uh, she was... Part of my own childhood, I used to watch like Harley all the time as a kid, along with my little brother, and some of my parents. And this is her memoir about the challenges she went through, about the abuse she suffered from her mother, and from other people, particularly a producer at Nickelodeon, who shall not be named, um, for legalistic, legalistic uh, reasons. Um, but also about her own reaction to that, her own jealousies, her own issues that she has worked through. Uh, it's gotten a lot of critical praise. It's one of those books where I don't know how good of a book it would be, because even if it's a bad book, how many people would give it bad, how many people would give it criticism? Uh, so I'm hoping it's going to be really good so I don't have to, uh, explore that, uh, that worry. <laughs> um, but even if it isn't particularly well written, which I, 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 from what I've read, it seems like it is well written. I think it's an important work to read to understand the abuses that sometimes happen in Hollywood. And it just seems like a very therapeutic book for her specifically. Uh, so again, even if it's bad, I'm glad it was written at least. At least for her. The other two books are about more, uh, less personal issues to one person and more broader things. The first is Overthrow, A Century of America's... Okay, Overthrow, America's Century of Regime Change from Hawaii to Iraq. Says right in the title what that's about. Uh, I have been interested in American imperialism for a bit. Uh, I have strong opinions on American imperialism, but I recognize that my own opinions aren't as well founded as they could be. And so I hope that this book will allow me to uh, make sure my opinions are right. <laughs> uh, you cherry pick out the things that I don't, I guess, agree with. Um, <laughs> I, I, I jest, of course. Um, I, I do hope that this book will give me more information so I can I can learn more about American imperialism, learn more about this this subject, about specific is, is instances uh, throughout history. I just, I started getting interested in this uh, political issue 
mostly because of my ex. I, I, I dated a woman from Brazil whose own country had had been in the past overthrown uh, violently by American backed by an American backed uh, junta. Uh, which is a horrific thing in my in my opinion, and so it's something that is kind of personal in that sense that I had that personal interest because I had someone I had someone in my life who had a more personal interest in it. The last book is Merchants of Doubt. The subtitle is How a Handful of Scientists obscure the truth on issues from tobacco smoke to global warming. And again, the, the the basis of that is right in the title. I heard about this book from Five Books, which is a site that takes an expert in a field, and, and they talk about, you know, five books that are great introductions to whatever subject they're talking about. Um... The Rise of Islam, or Vikings, or Biodiversity, or Climate Change, or any number of other things. It's a great site if you're interested in learning and finding good nonfiction books about a specific subject that you're really interested in. I would highly recommend going to that site. I will uh, put a link down below for that site. I'm sure probably everybody's heard of it, but whatever. Uh, and again, this... It's, it's self-explanatory what this, what this links up with Secret, because this is a book that talks about uh, the behind-closed-doors um, political and money machinations that obscure truths. Uh, the third prompt is Borders. Now, this one was a little bit hard for me. Uh, I probably could have found books that deal with geopolitical borders. I did have, I do have one, but even that one, it focused on something less than just, more than just the border of a particular country or anything. And the other ones are very abstract. Uh, but I still uh, want to talk about them. The first book, the one that has that political border, um, sorry, that's my eye, is Reza Aslan, uh, No God But God, which is another book about Islam. Um, I started reading this book a while back again, never finished it, liked what I read of it, uh, and it's actually where I learned what I know about the Prophet Muhammad is life. Um, this is just a work that talks about the history of Islam. Um, very, uh, very simple. Uh, the reason why I have it in borders is because of the location much of this book takes place. The Middle East, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, um, Iraq, Turkey. Uh, much of this, for much of history that has been considered kind of a borderland between empires, between civilizations, you know, between the, uh, the Roman Empire and the various, uh, Persian empires that grew up out that grew up out of out of Persia. Um so and even now it's kind of the Middle East, middle of what? Middle of uh Africa, Asia, and Europe. So I think it fits. This next one is a little bit a little bit more forced, but it still looks like it's a good book. And that is Rats. Uh the subtitle is an it's observations on the history and habitat of the city's most unwanted inhabitants. Uh, and the reason why I kind of put that in as a border book is because of the border between human and animal, natural and, I guess, artificial, you know, cities. Um, I don't really believe that line of thinking. Uh human beings are a natural creature. And even though, you know, stuff like bookcases and houses are kind of processed and built and such, they are still all made from natural products. And they will decompose, even if over a very, very long time in some cases. 
and they will return to the natural world as their constituent ingredients when we all die. <laughs> and so will we when we die. Um, cheery subject. Um, but it is part of like the human conscious, like separating from the natural world. You know, you think of the natural world, the, the forests and the wild animals in there. And when you think of rats going through sewer, sewers, I think maybe that kind of uh, feels like crossing over a border. Or when you see a spider in your house, kind of a crossing over a border. Not to mention more horrific stuff like when a snake comes in your backyard or when a bear is rummaging around in your garbage can. Uh, but that's my reasoning there. Again, it is forced, I, I, I admit, but I want to read that book, so what are you going to have me do? Not read that book? I don't know. <laughs> um, no, I don't want to get banned from YouTube. Uh, I'm starting to enjoy myself here. Uh, the other two books for Border, though, are Flim Flam, the subtitle, being Psychics, ESP, Unicorns, and Other Delusions. And this is a book written by Jim, James Randy. Randy, he is a, uh, I believe he was, he was a magician, uh, who spends a lot of his time kind of, uh, explaining different, or I guess not explaining, but can't think of the right word, uh, my brain, not, not helping right now, looking at instances where people have said this thing right here is magic or supernatural, or I can read minds, or I can uh, predict the future, I, if you put down five cards, I can, I can know what those five cards are right now, and he tests them, and so in a sense, it is a kind of border, because there is a, there is truth, and there, there is true, and there is false, and James Randi is in the middle saying, this is also here, and this is over here. <laughs> Border. <laughs> um, the other book, though, is Eating Animals, which goes into the same Eating Animals by Jonathan Safran uh, Foyer? Um, this is another book that I am reading, that I wanted to read, and I think I briefly had it, and then I got rid of it. Uh, but it looks at, again, veganism. And the reason why I have it as, vo as a border book is because it, uh, the, the writer spends a lot of his life going back and forth between meat-eating and vegetarianism, and I think eventually he does go vegan. Um, so the border between the kinds of diets that he eats. There. Uh, the final prompt, though, is element. And this is the one that I just kind of put stuff in, really. Uh, the obvious way to take element would be, you know, chemical elements. But I didn't really have any books that are strong on chemistry. I did have books that are about science, though, so there will be chemical issues in there in some capacity. Uh, I know element can also just mean, you know, an abstract part of something, though, so, again, I, I think these work, but they are even harder to explain than some of the other ones. But the first book, and the one that I own, is Oliver Sacks, is Migraine. This is a book about migraines, which I have luckily never had, but my thought is... There is a lot of chemical uh, reasons and undercurrents for why our brains work the way they do. And those undercurrents need elements. I, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, I don't really think I even saw it too much about myself. I just, it seemed to fit. You know, this is the abstract reason why we have, why things happen in our brains. Now, the last two books though. That I've got are Super Intelligence. And Super Intelligence is by a writer named Nick Bostrom. 
uh, the subtitle is Pass Dangers Strategies. It is about it is about artificial intelligence and the potentiality or the potential of there being a eventually a really smart artificial intelligence that is smarter than all of us that could terminate all of us as Terminator did. <laughs> Or how, how in uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, or the Borg, or any number of other artificial intelligences throughout science fiction history. Which, by the way, New World's November coming very soon. Uh, I'm very excited for that. But my thoughts was, uh, again, the chemical undercurrents of the brain, but also the chemical undercurrents of artificial intelligence. Even, like, silicon being possibly used to make, being used to make computers. So, that's my reasoning. And the final one, book, is Control the Dark History. The Dark History of, that's just kind of, the Dark History and Troubling Present of Eugenics. Uh, Biology. Uh, yeah, this is a book that goes into eugenics, a biological subject that will probably have something to do with elements somehow. Again, I'm not really sure. These last three, I don't really know if these really fit or not. I might change them out, or I might not, or I might read something else. I don't know. Get off my case about it, man. Um... But, uh, for now, that is kind of my, my go-to list, and this has been going on long enough anyway, so I'm gonna, I want to say something like a climax, but I'm just gonna let it, let it finish there, because my voice is hurting, and because I have talked for way too long, so. These are the books that I have on hand. Which I might read. Here's my little notepad of other books. I will link everything down below. If anyone is interested in any of these works. That they can easily find them. I will also link down below. Uh, again, a book olive channel. Uh, please take part in this uh, event this year. I, I know it will be a lot of fun. Uh, and happy reading Sunday for all of you. Bye booktube.